السلام عليكم انا دكتور محمد خضيري اسيستنت لكشر في يونيفرستي وي هاف 12 كرينيال نيرف اون ايتش سايد اولفاتوري اوبتيك اوكولوموتور تروكليار تريجيمينال ابديوسنس فيشيال ستيمولو كوكليار لوسوفارينجيال فيجاس اكسيسوري اند هايبوجلوس as you see here in this picture this is the nuclei of the first four cranial nerve are from the midbrain and the middle four cranial nerve from the bones and the last four cranial nerve are from the medulla oblongata the first cranial nerve is the olfactory nerve as we see here this is the fiber of the olfactory nerve crossing the cerebriform plate of small and this is the olfactory bulb and olfactory tract. When we start to uh, examine the olfactory nerve, we ask the patient to close his eye and then we examine each nostril separately by non-irritating substance and this substance must be familiar for the patient. Okay, abnormality of smell usually may be unilateral or bilateral. Unilateral usually associated with neurological disorder and the bilateral usually with local ENT causes. The second cranial nerve is the optic nerve and optic nerve examination is very important. We examine the visual acuity as illustrated here in this picture by Snell's chart and this is a different form of Snell's chart. Visual field examination. Examination of the visual field is done by confrontation test as illustrated here in the right picture. And according to the level of the lesion in the optic pathway will lead to visual field defect. For example, here, if the lesion in the optic chiasma, this will lead to bitemporal hemianopia or bionasal hemianopia. And if the lesion in the optic tract, this will lead to homonymous hemianopia. And if the lesion in the visual cortex, this will lead to homonymous hemianopia with macular sparing because, as we know, the macula is bilaterally, bilaterally represented. And then we examine the color vision, as illustrated here in the upper picture, and fundus examination by indirect ophthalmoscope to detect papilledema, hypertensive retinopathy, or diabetic retinopathy or another disorders. The third cranial nerve is the oculomotor nerve and as we know that it is supplied all the extraocular muscle except the lateral rectus muscle supplied by the abducent nerve and the superior oblique muscle supplied by the trochlear nerve. In this picture you will find illustration of extraocular muscle motility. We know that the oculomotor nerve supply also the constrictor pupillary muscle. So when we examine the pupillary light reflex as illustrated here in the upper picture, you will put your hand between the patient eye and the light reflex will direct it on to one side. You will find normally that both, eye, both pupils will be constricted and this is normal response and they are called the direct and consensual light reflex direct the same side of the torch and consensual is the other side the fifth cranial nerve is the trigeminal nerve which have a sensory branch and a motor branch a sensory branch receives sensation from the face through the ophthalmic maxillary and the mandibular divisions and the motor branch supplies the muscle of mastication, temporalis, masseter, medial and lateral trichoids, and the other muscles like tensor villi palati, mylohyoid, and tensor tympani muscles. As we see here in this picture, we examine each division separately, ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular, and comparing the sensation on each division. 
trigeminal nerve is the afferent of the corneal reflex we gently touch the corneoscleral junction by a piece of cotton as illustrated in this picture okay reflex blinking is the normal response then we would like to examine the motor part as we see in the lower picture we examine the masseter muscle the temporalis and the trichoid muscles the gluteal is important reflex to distinguish between pseudobulbar and the true bulbar pulsi as illustrated here in the lower picture we ask the patient to open his mouth and we are tapping over our index finger if the reflex is exaggerated response this is associated with pseudobulbar pulse the ophthalmic division is a purely sensory and it receives sensation from the cornea cerebral body conjunctiva nasal cavity sinus skin of the eyebrow forehead and the nose the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve is also a pure sensory branch is to receive sensation from the side of the nose, the lower eyelid, and the upper lip. The vestibular branch of the trigeminal nerve is a mixed sensory and the motor. The sensory branch, the sensory fiber, receives sensation from the temporal, auricular, and the lower face and lower lip, and also from the oral mucosa of the anterior to third of the tongue and mandibular gums and teeth. The motor fibers supply the muscle of mastication, masseter muscle, temporalis, pterygoid muscles. The cranial nerve is the facial nerve. As we know, the nuclei of the facial nerve is originating from the bones. The facial nerve during its course has intracranial segment of the nerve. Then the mitral portion and the intratemporal portion, the segment, tympanic segment, and the mastoid segment. Then the extracranial portion of the nerve extends from the stylomastoid form. As we see in this picture, that the upper half of the face is bilaterally represented, and this is very important that the lower half of the face is unilaterally representative but the upper half is bilaterally represented as illustrated in the picture on the left side the facial nerve receives the this sensation from the anterior to third of the tongue so the nervous intermediates sweet sultry and sore sensation and the lastly is the better sensation to be tested when we start to examine the taste sensation we ask the patient to close his eyes and then we dry the tongue and put the tested material like sugar in each side of the tongue and ask the patient to identify this material. This pictures illustrate how we examine the frontalis muscle and the other muscle of facial expression, tubicularis oculi, oxinator muscle, and retracto oris. To examine the frontalis muscle, we ask the patient to raise his eyebrow and we look for the corrugation of the forehead. We compare the corrugation in the forehead. The added corrugation will be less than the one that has a facial weakness compared to the other one. And this is clear in the left side picture to examine orbicularis oculi muscle we ask the patient to close his eye firmly and we try to open the eye definitely there is a weakness in the area with paralysis compared to the other side the other two pictures on the right side show how we examine the vaccinator and retractor angular muscle let's summarize the difference form of facial nerve legion from the upper motor neuron legion and lower motor neuron legion. The upper motor neuron legion as a part of hemiplegia, usually the upper part of the face is spared 
and the lower part of the face is worse and severe for voluntary movement but may be okay for emotional movement as illustrated here in this picture and the lower motor neuron region the region may be nuclear pontine fiber and this is usually associated with region of the another nerve from the bones like trigeminal and sixth nerve and it may be associated with long tract region so it is called the crossed hemiplegia paralysis on the other side and the nerve on the other side and the other side crossed hemiplegia the region in the lower motor neuron may be at the temporal bone like temporal uh, bone fracture or in the facial canal like Bell's palsy or middle ear infection or the others like MS surgery, acoustic neuroma or herpetic lesion. This slide illustrates the difference between voluntary movement and emotional movement in patient with upper motor neuron facial due to cerebral hemorrhage. When you ask the patient to do voluntary movement, you will find deviation of the mouse to another side and loss of the nasolabial fold. This is paralysis of the lower half of the face. But when you tell the patient a jockey or some sort to see the facial expression, you will not find this difference. The same person in the picture B. Let's summarize the manifestation of facial nerve lesion according to the site of the lesion, superior nuclear, nuclear, or infranuclear lesion. Bell's palsy is the most common cause of facial paralysis. Halatil Bell's palsy ktir, no kutinze fil end round, or fil short cases akhir sana. The diagnosis, the clinical picture, had kalim na ana, wal farq bin al upper motor wal lower motor neural lesion, or al muhim. The investigation needed a nerve conduction study to detect the percentage of the degeneration of the facial nerve. Schirmer test is a quantitative evaluation of the hair production, and impedance audiometry can record the presence or absence of stavidius muscle contraction. These are some predictors of poor prognostic. Factors in Bell's palsy if the patient has a complete facial paralysis or no recovery by the three weeks or elderly patient above 60 years, severe pain, Ramsey Hunt syndrome, or associated other condition like diabetes and pregnancy, severe degeneration of the facial nerve show in electrophysiological testing or nerve conduction study. The eighth cranial nerve is the vestibular cochlear nerve. As we know, it has a cochlear part, مسؤول عن ال hearing, and vestibular part, وده مسؤول عن ال equilibrium. The cochlear part is examined by Rene and Weber test to comparing between the bone conduction and air conduction to detect. Sensory neural hearing loss and conductive hearing loss. To examine the vestibular part, we are looking for the vertigo, nystagmus, and loss of balance, as illustrated in the pictures. So, pharyngeal nerve is originating from the medulla oblongata. And it innervates the mucosa membrane of the tonsil, pharynx, and posterior one third of the tongue, pharyngeal muscle, carotid sinus, and carotid body. Vagus nerve originating from the medulla oblongata, it innervates the muscle of the larynx, pharynx, and soft palate. Parasympathetic innervation of the thorax and abdominal viscera. Uh, the function of the vagus nerve supplies the muscle of the larynx, pharynx, and soft palate, and sensation from uh, the heart, lung, and the generative system, lower parasympathetic system. Okay, طبعاً the vagus nerve ده من parasympathetic supply لل foregut or midgut, as we know. 
طبعا نظريا احنا بنفحص الجلوس فارينجيال نيرف لوحده والفيجاس لوحده ولكن براكتيكالي طبعا آه لا الاثنين بيتفحصوا مع بعض لانه الفايبر اوف ذا جلوس فارينجيال نيرف متحمله على الفيجاس نيرف فاحنا ايفالويت الفويس كواليتي هل البيشنت ده عنده هورسنس اوف فويس او ديسارسيا ولا لا وبعد كده بناسك البيشنت تو اوبن هيز ماوس اند لوكينج فور ذا يوفيولا ذا بوزيشن اند ذن وي اكزامين ذا بلاتر اند جاج ريفلكس اند وي تيست تيست سنسيشن فروم ذا بوستيرور وان سيرت اوف ذا تانك النيجاتيف فايندينج او الابنورماليتيز اللي ممكن تبقى موجوده لوس اوف فويس كواليتي البيشنت ممكن يكون عنده ديسارسيا or hoarseness of voice and during the examination we may find deviation of the uvula towards the non-paralyzed side and the patient may have swallowing, swallowing difficulties or nasal regurgitation and during examination of the patient we ask the patient to open his mouth and we using our torch to see the uvula if it is in the midline this is normal if it is deviated to one side it is pulled by the normal side and then we uh, examine the gag reflex by gentle touch of the posterior pharyngeal wall uh, and the normal response is contraction of the soft palate طبعا السنسيشن هنا متحمل على جلوسوفارينجيال نيرف والكونتراكشن ده او المسل كونتراكشن ده مسؤول عنه الفيجاس نيرف موتور فايبر الالفن كرينيال نيرف او الاكسسوري نيرف طبعا ليه كرينيال بارت اند سبينال بارت الكرينيال فايبر دي متحمله مع الفيجاس نيرف والسبينال بارت ده اللي هو بيغذي الاسترنوماستويد مسل and trapezius muscle as illustrated in the pictures. The last cranial nerve is the hypoglossal nerve. طبعا ال ال nuclei بتاعته from the medulla oblongata. The hypoglossal nerve it innervates all the muscles of the tongue except palatoglossus. The function of the hypoglossal nerve is the movement of the tongue. فبالتالي this function في the unilateral region can cause paresis, atrophy, fibrillation or fasciculation of the tongue. During protrusion of the tongue, طبعا ال 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 muscle of the tongue is pushing muscle, pushing. So the tongue is deviated towards the paralyzed side. Okay, ده مهمة.